Hi guys, Artie. So, uh, I feel like I should say I'm like 40 weeks pregnant. I almost just did. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to try to film a couple videos for you guys today. So, first one is my labor and delivery because I know a lot of you guys have been asking. Um, I've gotten a couple messages. Uh, a lot of you guys know that it's been kind of a crazy week for us. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, you guys kind of... I've been kind of quiet on Facebook just because it's, it has been kind of crazy for us. So let me get into labor and delivery. Um, as many of you guys know, we started with contractions at 18 weeks all the way till 40 weeks, going anywhere from about 10 minutes apart to 3 to 5 minutes apart that I had contractions, and they were really the intense contractions. Um, luckily, they didn't change my cervix at all. Um, not until the end, then they started to really change my cervix. So, um, Thursday into Friday, because uh, my C-section was scheduled for the 23rd. Um, <laughs> yeah, my C-section was scheduled for the 23rd. Um, I only slept for about three hours. It's I thought for some strange reason, because like with my first C-section, I slept an hour with my son. Only one hour because um, I had no idea what to expect. And then um, with my daughter, I think I slept for two hours because uh, I wasn't sure what to expect with this hospital having a C-section. So I figured this time it's my third C-section, <laughs> second C-section there at that hospital. It, you know, I guess a lot of it had to do with, um, and I know it's the biggest question, did I get my gentle C-section? So I guess it was a lot of what was going through my mind that morning was, you know, am I going to get it? Am I going to have to fight for it? And blah, blah, blah. So, um, which talking to the nursing staff the day before for my final pre-op, they were all kind of like, oh, I don't see why we can't do this. They said, you know, they're, you know, it all, like for, um, my husband to stand in front of us, or stand in front of me, well, to hold my hand or anything like that during um, the smile block, I would need, you know, that's up to the anesthesiologist. Uh, she said, that's not really up to the doctor. She's like, if if he or she says uh, no, <laughs> she's like, you kind of know. She's like, but it's up to them. Um, so I said, so so that one is a possibility. She said, yeah. She's like, I don't see why not. She's like, unless they say no, just because, you know, they prefer. Um, she also said then, uh, she looked at the rest of it and she said, you know, you understand hugging her. I said, well, that's the one thing I wanted. I said, I wanted to hug her. And she's like, okay. I said, but if there's something wrong with her, I don't care about my hug. Just let me, let me at least see her and be able to touch, touch her just quick. Um, and I told them, I said, you know, we had prepared at, you know, really at 24 weeks at any point that I could have her and that I wouldn't be able to touch her at all. I said, but, you know, after talking with the high risk OB, he had said that I could, you know, just kind of squeeze her foot on her way by. And he, you know, that way if something happened to her, I would feel better. And I'm going to start crying. Um, so they, they said, you know, they said, okay, so you don't want to, you know, I said, if she's at risk of something or there's something wrong, I, yeah, throw my birth plan out the window, I could care less. It, the most important thing, it's a course start, which I know some of you guys maybe didn't understand that when I put up that I had a very upsetting appointment. It was, what upset me was that I was told yes, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, 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 we can't do that, which was kind of frustrating for me. So anyways, and excuse the boobs. <laughs> One time I actually have nursing boobs. <laughs> I actually have boobs. So anyways, so we got there, um, and my doctor had told, the high risk OB said, you know, because of the anemia, I still had the low-lying placenta. Uh, he had said, tell them, you know, he's like, they're going to ask if you're dilated. And he said, just tell them no, and that you have been checked this week. And I'm like, but I, I am dilated. He said, because they're going to check you. And they'll call and get the surgical team there stat because he's like, you know, you know, he's like, as you know, that there's a certain point that, um, that you can't do a C-section. I'm like, yes, I know that. He's like, 
well, he's like, why mess with stuff down there if we don't need to? He's like, because they're going to do a non-stress test with you again. So he said, just tell them no. He's like, they don't, they don't need to be playing with anything down there. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. So it was nice. I didn't have to get checked. I was all prepared to get checked um, because I had been checked Monday. And I think I was like three, uh, uh, two and a half, almost three. Um, so, and I knew three was the cutoff because uh, they were supposed to check me on Thursday. But I kind of squeaked out of it by saying, you know, really, if I'm going to go into labor, you know, I would, you know. So anyways, <laughs> um, got in there, they asked me all those wonderful questions, and they hooked me up to the machine. And I was, they could see I was contracting um, for a minute, and it was, eh. Yeah. Basically, let me put this way. They lasted a minute. And there was a minute in between. It was funny watching my thing. Um, they have to talk to the high risk doctor to get it because it it was to get the um, the printout. It was like this. Sweet. He was you know very, and he was you know he was very surprised that you know they didn't rush the surgical team after five minutes. They let it go for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they said, okay, you're contracting a lot. We uh, we were calling in the surgical team a little bit early, so be ready. Now this was at 6.45, because they hooked me up at six. Um, yeah, they hooked me up at six. 6.45 is when they came in and said, we're rushing the surgical team. We just got a hold of your doctor because they kept trying to call her earlier and they couldn't get a hold of her because she was in the shower getting ready and then she was on her way there. So um, they only had at that time, because I know some of you guys, some of you guys are going to go, well, isn't there another doctor? It was only a midwife and she can't do a C-section. So um, yeah. <laughs> made things a little interesting um, yeah so about seven o'clock my doctor walked in and she said okay so we're doing your birth plan correct and I said uh yes I would like to she's like all right just kind of go over it with me again she's like just because she's like I don't have time to pull out your chart and she's like we just need to get you in there you know pretty quick she's like you're contracting quite a bit um, I said to her, I said, so basically if I didn't want, if I wanted to VBAC, she's like, you would have, she's like, we can't do it here. She's like, but yeah, you probably would have been having her today or tomorrow. I'm like, oh, did you have to say tomorrow? Because I really want the 24th. But anyways, so I went over it again with her and she said, well, hold on, let me grab the anesthesiologist. So he came running in. He's like, what's up? And she's, you know, she said, she'd like for her husband to be in there, you know. And he said, yeah, that's fine, whatever, you know. So my doctor had to finish scrubbing up and everything. And I had, um, you know, I walked into the room. And, of course, um, Mike, I guess for some of you guys, yeah, we I decided to go with him. We had talked the night before. And he really, we still have things to iron out and work on, but... He was right. He asked me to think about how I would feel, you know, five years from now, you know, not letting him in. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not happy with what, what's gone on in the last, you know, couple months and everything like that. And he said, yeah, I said, he's like, but can we put that aside for her? And I said, okay. I just asked him, I said, if something's going wrong with me, I said, I really don't want you in there with me. He's like, well, he's like, we'll cross that bridge if we need to. So anyway, so he was really good. He, he said, it's just, it's been difficult on him not knowing what to do to help me, which I simply said, well, just not being a jerk would have helped. But anyways, so we both get into the room and the anesthesiologist, well, I was happy when I had um, Tiny, there was a nurse who, she was wonderful. She was very, very good about saying, you know, just relax, breathe and everything like that when they did it, but I still like, can't help it. 
and so she said to me, she's like, Jan, I understand you want, you know, you want us to keep everything kind of relaxed and calm. And I said, yeah, I said, I get, I said, something when you tell me I can't move because if I move, I can get paralyzed. He said, it freaks me out. And I said, and even if I'm not moving, I feel like I'm moving. And she's like, okay. Um, and then of course, um, Penny was one of the other nurses. So she's like, Janet, she's like, just... She's like, just relax, because she's like, you finally get to hold, you know, your little, your little rainbow baby. And I'm like, okay, you know, you're going to make me cry before I start. So it was good to have them in there. And then, you know, the anesthesiologist said, okay, well, Mike, you can stand right in front of Janet and just, you know, hold her hands, you know. And he said, you know, he said, you know you know, just don't, don't pass out. And Mike's like, well, I don't, you know, he's like, I watched, uh, cause he was able to watch my, um, C-section with my son. He couldn't film it, but he could watch. And he said, I didn't, you know, I didn't pass out during that. So, so he got to, you know, be right there and, you know, keep me calm. So I stayed pretty calm during that. And then of course the doctor, you know, my doctor walks in and she's like, okay, so we're doing a gentle C-section. She's like, I want to just remind everybody, you know, no conversations about anything else. Just kind of keep it relaxed, keep it calm in here. And I said, well, the big thing is, I said, I just want to be able to hear the doctor. So that way, if there's something wrong, I can hear it and not go, wait a minute, why are you taking, what's, what's wrong, what's going on? And so they said, okay. Um, fortunately they couldn't drop the drape for me because they lost the clamp, so that's okay. Um, but she said, uh, to Penny, she said, Penny, do you want to have the honors of catching the baby? Which is basically the, they're the ones that then pick up the baby and then she was, she's the one that would help me hold the baby. And course Penny's like I would be honored and I was I was honored that Penny wanted to do it very honored because it was you know Penny had been there through all the you know the DNC's with us and the doctor's appointments so it was I was very happy to have Penny so anyways <laughs> I'm like bawling my eyes out almost on here for you guys Um, so they did it, you know, they started cutting and, um, the doctor said, uh, alert the pediatrician that there's meconium in the fluid. And I'm like, okay. And so, um, she kind of just peeked over the, the drape and said, Janet, you're not going to be able to hug her because we need, and I said, just, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. I understand completely. So they got her out. Um, and so they then um, um, put Madeline, brought her around to me. I was able to give her a quick little hug and I could see all of her hair. I'm like, oh my gosh. She has hair, and then, like, basically the room turned into where you could hear a pin drop. It was very quiet. And they left the door open just a crack, so that way I could keep hearing her cry, which made me feel so much better. Um, especially knowing about the meconium and knowing that that can sometimes require, you know, a NICU, which then would require her leaving. So they took a little bit longer closing me up. Um, just because they wanted to make sure they got everything really good. And even the doctor looked at me and she said, Janet, she's like, you know, your hip would have never allowed you to have a natural birth. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you know, your hips are deformed. I'm like, yeah, I said, they, they face in. And, and she's like, yeah, she's like, but she's like, your pelvis, she's like, even being, you know, She's like, you're probably about three centimeters dilated. She's like, your pelvis didn't move even a little bit. She's like, because normally the bones move out a little bit. 
She's like, you would have never been able to have a child. She's like, you would have had them get stuck and need an emergency C-section. I'm like, okay, so that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, but then also hearing about the meconium, you know, I do, you know, was very happy that my water didn't break at any point uh, because I know that that could have made things worse because they wouldn't have known how long that, you know, yeah, it would have made things worse for us. So I'm going to end it here and it'll be part two.